everyone, Paul SM. Welcome to part three of our Fujimi 124 scale Ferrari 250 GTO. Now, we're going to get this finished today. I've kind of pushed through on this one. Probably got two parts in one here. <laughs> so much footage. There's at least 15 hours worth of footage to get to this. Um, a lot of editing, but we got rid of a lot of excess footage that we didn't really need, to be honest. So we kind of edited it down to where it should be because we could sit here all day looking at making belts polishing you've seen it before you don't need to see it again so there's no point drawing it out for another part is there but excited to get this thing finished um and i'm sure you're excited to see it finished too because it's got a lot of interest this car so i'm sure uh, i'm hoping this video is going to get a few views anyway speaking of views if you want to watch this on two week early access you can become a patron down below um, these videos have already been out for two weeks um, for patrons and supporters and they get released after a couple of weeks onto the normal ISM channel if you're watching now over on ISM. If you want to become a patron, links down below, tick tier 2 or higher and you'll get instant access to all the air release videos. There's one there already and this one will be there ready to go soon as well. So come on over, join the patron and help support these videos. Okay, so what it seems to be the obligatory cutting off of parts. Now, I'm not going to show all these because it's immensely boring. Thankfully, nowhere near as many parts as there was for all the running gear and the engine and that, but still plenty to contend with. Uh, going to be sprayed in a multitude of different colours, some metallic, some black, some textured. What we're going to do, we're going to get them all cut off the sprue and cleaned up. We're going to use various UMP sanders from our sponge thinny stick uh, to our thinny sticks to our buffer. I just get rid of all the sprue points nice and carefully not doing any damage to the part careful nothing snaps very easy to snap part at this stage and just gently work away so remove most of the sprue point with your cutters then hit it with sponge then hit it with the buffer and polisher and get it back to as new plastic and like i say quite a few parts some of them quite brittle parts like this roll cage very very easy to snap so don't put a lot of excess pressure on there um it's an old you know hey hey funny saying of mine but let the sand do the work you don't need to press hard and then we need to assemble it as well so typical fashion i put a couple of dabs uh, of uh, time extra thin on there and we're going to just get the rear support roughly in place and then we use the floor pan itself to line everything up and then leave it there to dry until the extra things dry which only takes a couple of minutes anyway put a little bit of extra thin on there just to hold it in place and locate the front part locate the back line it up and then like i say just leave it to dry these will be coming off to be painted separately um but we can apply a little bit of glue just to make sure it's all in place lots of other parts to do some photo etch here now i'm not going to use all the photo etch out the sets i'm literally going to use what i deem useful or viable for replacement not all of it needs doing uh but like the instrument binnacle the switches here which we're going to drill and place in with little turned aluminium uh switches and bezels make quite a bit of difference they're tiny tiny little parts so this is a 0.3 mil drill bit i'm just going to drill out the dash uh where required what i didn't see was there was a photo etch around and i didn't see that at the time which is a real shame but it was already painted and you wouldn't really notice it anyway to be honest so just remember if you've got a photo etch set just because it's there doesn't mean you have to use every single bit of it we've got some very very fiddly little switches and buttons to put in place so you can see three of them in place there already we're just getting our tweezers. I'm using my decal tweezers for a bit of extra uh, purchase on the part because smaller tweezers can ping parts off. A little dab of uh, super glue on. As you can see, I've zoomed in a little bit. And we've got one other part here. And I'll show you just how small they are. You can pick it up. There we go. Tiny, tiny little part. Look at that. Minuscule. If we can get it to focus. See? That's what we're dealing with. Little tiny parts like this. Uh, so get it with the tweezers. The flatter blades of these tweezers make them easier to grab bits. A little dab of CA glue and then push it in to the hole you've already made. Like so. Simple, but adds a little bit of detail to it. And again, you don't want to put them in. Don't put them in. Do what you want to put in and leave out what you don't. It's simple as that. You don't have to use everything. If you're a bit overwhelmed by it, don't put it in. If you're happy to carry on, put it in. I use about 50% of my uh, photo etch, I would say. Uh, just some parts I didn't really think warranted being used. But this adds a bit of detail. It's a nice bit of contrast to the dashboard as well. So parts like these are well worth using, in my opinion. 
onto the door cards. Now we've got some photo etch to go on these. There is some raised detail on the door cards already. We're going to get those off with trumpet chisel. You can have your pink in the air like I have there. It's, it's the law. And just gently run across the top, removing most of the plastic. And these are sharp, so be careful you don't slip because they will take a nice chunk out of your finger. Ask me how I know. Yes, I've never done. No, I have. I have cut myself with this uh, a couple of times now. Uh, this has got my own personal finger guard made out of it. Some form card. Remember form card from years ago? The malleable plastic stuff you could put in hot water. So, yeah, it works well. And, uh, yeah, it makes a handy little uh, finger support. So just go around, take all the plastic. We can sand this in a little bit to get it all nice and smooth. And then these are the parts that are going to replace it. So we're cutting off of our Zoron PE shears. And then we'll cut them and trim them so they're nice and flush. And uh, just add to again, a little bit of detail to the interior. It's quite a bland interior, really. Um, we're going to sand off all this and key up the surface a little bit just to add um, a bit of texture for the super glue to get a bit of bite on it. And like I say, just trim up the photo etch parts. Uh, most interior is black, unfortunately. It's not really all that interesting to look at. Um, so add detail where we can. And that's where the detail set comes into its own. So cut these up. Get a bit of uh, Bob Smith's uh, super glue I've got here. A little bit overzealous here, put a little bit too much on. So we'll spread that round elsewhere as well. And uh, then we can carefully place on top of the photo. Make sure it's the right way round. Any cutouts in the right place, it's all lined up. You get a little bit of work in time with the Bob Smith's foam safe glue. It doesn't grab instantly, unless it's your finger. Anything on your finger grabs instantly. Anything else doesn't. Now I'm going to prime all the interior tub in my surface of black and all the other parts. This will be getting flocked. We're going to remove those belts that were at the back. Um, I didn't think about that at the time. Um, and my partner, girlfriend Hannah, is going to flock it for us off camera, of course. Um, you've seen me flock before. It's the same process. Uh, and everything else, we're going to just prime in Mr. Service of 1500 black. Let that dry. And then we can come back and put the paint down. So... Yeah, you don't need to go mad. We've got a 0 0.3 Apex, about 18 PSI. We've got some uh, TS29. I'm using the TS29, I've got loads of it at the minute. So, semi gloss black. It's nearly enough, near enough as good as uh, LP5. So, I'm just using it up as a matter of course. So, all these parts are getting done in semi gloss black. Again, 0 0.3 Apex, 18 PSI, and a couple of coats of it all round. There we go, and on our door cards as well. Making sure we get all those little angles and recesses all covered. You see all the parts are held on by various methods, either through holes, CA glue, or a bit of white tack. And then on the top of the dashboard, we've got some zero paint texture black, and we're also going to apply that to the seats as well. Um, did toy with doing a seat I saw on a particular car, which was half leather, half Alcantara. Um, but I decided in the end just to do the full kind of textured fabric seat. I like the look of it. Uh, we're going to put some belts on these, so hopefully they'll liven up. So the texture paint, I'll put a good coat down, thin coat, and then I'll bring the airbrush a good 18 inches away and let um, the air dry the paint as it gets there, and it adds a lot more texture to the, uh, the part, I find, over time. And there we go, another coat quickly. We've got a nice bit of interesting surface texture to the seat so again just has a little bit of visual interest i did toy the idea of doing them two-tone with the black leather and blackish alcantara but it would have been a real pig to do and i quite like the look of this while we're here we're going to spread up the steering wheel centers now there was a photo etch part for this and i looked at it and i thought it doesn't look much different than the plastic so i left it as is we're going to spray all the center in silver and as you see here we've got ak's wood set for armor we're going to paint it in um, dark brown. And then we're going to try and dry brush it in the lighter brown. It didn't work. So I did it a slightly different way instead. And I painted it in the light brown. And then dry brushed it in the dark. And it worked a lot better. A lot of the steering wheels on these cars. Steering wheels. That's a different word, isn't it? A lot of the steering wheels on these cars are a very light brown textured uh, wood. So that's what I went for. Dials popped in place with the Fujimi decals. These were then fairly fuss free. Didn't fit in there too bad. Uh, let's get them all lined up. They are numbered. Let's get them in the right order if you bothered. And then we hit it with some UMP strong to get them to set and snug it in place. And here we go. I have to try it the other way around. We've gone the right way. I've got probably the worst brush I own. 
uh, which is absolutely knackered here. And we're going to paint the lighter color first. So this is going to take a couple of coats because we're putting a very light color over a dark color. But we'll put a couple of coats on, let it dry between coats, and we can come back later and we'll dry brush the darker brown. So like I say, probably the worst brush I own. It was the first one that came to hand. No real fuss needed here. It's not like we're you know painting somebody's face perfectly. We're just detail brushing a stain well. Now we've got the photo S bezel here. It's been painted in Miss Surfacer 1500 black. I'm using my knife just to gently scrape away at the bezels themselves so that they become silver. And once that's done, we can put a little bit of CA glue on the face of the instrument cluster. Like so. This is the Bob Smith stuff. So again, you want to be generous without being over generous, if that makes sense. You want enough on it to grab it without it flooding everywhere, renewing everything. And whatever you do, don't put CA glue in the dial to make it look like glass, because it will dry hazy and foggy. Once we've done that, we pop our instrument bezels on, line it up, get it in place, and there we go. And then seat belts. Now, I will do one day a full tutorial on doing these. I'm pretty much sure I covered it in the Subaru videos I did a couple of years ago, um, but it's just too much to get in these videos. It takes so long to do. But basically, you've got the center buckle that goes on the uh, piece that goes over the shoulder and down your chest. So these are bent 90 degrees each side. And then you're threading it through as per the instructions. This set comes with the detail upset for the 250 GTO. Uh, and just going through for all the instructions. Like I say, to show one of these in depth, it's like a good 20 minutes to show. Uh, we're not going to fit that in here. I'm pretty sure I did cover it well. In the Subaru Technique series videos, which are further back on the channel, if you go and have a look. There we go, so there's one done. Repeat that for the other side. And then we just need to fold through various pieces of ribbon. I went with two millimeter belts on this one because I thought a little bit thinner might look a bit more uh, apt on this car. And it's a case, just follow the instructions, pull it through, cut the ribbon on an angle, try not let it fray, use nice sharp scissors. Uh, and then get it through and pull it through. You might have to redo it if you need to pull through multiple times. It is frustrating, and trust me, it does take a while. Once you've got it, though, a little bit double-sided tape on the back, stick it together, and there we go. There's a couple of the shoulder pieces done, and then, boom, there we go, all done. So just follow the instructions. It is fiddly. It is a bit frustrating. Now, I put these PE parts on here and completely didn't realize there was some resin parts till right to the end of the build and it was a little bit too late but there are some resin release buckles in the kit and i didn't see them but these didn't look too bad at all I'll put a bit of a wash on them later on and they looked okay very comprehensive detail upset this it is really really good um right there you see that prancing horse above my tweezers now that's the one that goes in the grill we lose that later it pings off into oblivion and i have to empty my entire bench to look for it to not find it. Luckily, we have a substitute. But yes, yeah, a bit gutted about that one because it was a nice piece of PE. But anyway, that's what happens when tweezers ping part off. And there we go. With the seats um, almost done, we just trim the part. Leave it at the back. We need to put a buckle on those to go to the back of the car for that kind of mount on the car. As you can see there on that piece, we've already done that one. It's already in there. So my girlfriend Hannah has already flocked this with us with my own flock which i may do something with later on i may be able to do a bit of a bulk buy on it or something we'll see now my old trick of using mr surfacer no it's not mr surfacer of mr leveling thinner to uh melt the decals in place so you see we've got the say belt decals there on the uh, belts so i normally load it up just touch it to the decal let the capillary action carry it, it soaks in melts the decal into the ribbon and looks really really good i've done this dozens and dozens of times it's always worked really well i'm not putting tons of mr uh, level and thinner on there <sighs> but as you'll see in a second it doesn't work it's the only time it's ever let me down um so we have to resort to using stick on ones which didn't look quite as good but hey it is what it is and as you can see look it's just completely melted them so before they fully set i decided to act quickly and take them off as good as i can Leaving a big gooey mess behind. But luckily I've got loads of these. I've got some sticky ones that you need to cut out. Uh, they're like self-adhesive, so they go on instead. And they still looked all right. Steering wheel, we've got the column on. We've got our steering wheel we painted in wood colours. I've clear-coated the steering wheel 
in Mr. Hobby Super Clear UV Cut. Let's give it a nice bit of gloss. We've got a Ferrari emblem to go in the middle, which we'll do later on. And we're just going to mount that to all the steering column for now. There we go. Looks good. Quite happy with that. It's looking the part. And then we put the column onto the dashboard. And the steering wheel is moving around. It's been an absolute nightmare. Uh, it was a little bit of a pig to get the steering wheel mounted on here. But we did. And then some foot pedals to go in place for the clutch, brake, and accelerator. So a little bit of CA glue and pop those in place. A little bit of careful application and careful positioning. And they go on no problem at all. And then the accelerator pedal itself. This one does need bending a little bit, so pay attention to the instructions, follow them, and to be honest, you can't really go wrong. So while it's a bit bland in there, it looks interesting in places. You've got to make the best of what you can. Roll cage in place. I had to clear the holes where the flocking was, so just go underneath with a cocktail stick and just poke up through the holes. And any flocking glue or paint that's there will get moved out of place. So I'm going to reverse glue this. I've got some Bob Smith's. Uh, foam slate uh, CA glue. It's nice and thin, so it's going to put it on the back. As soon as it touches, it'll capillary itself into the hole, like so. And then we'll just hit it with some um, Deluxe Materials Kicker. Quick spray off the bench. Psst. There you go, you heard that, didn't you? You heard me spray. And there we go, job done. Now, door cards, they're glued in place. Just follow the, uh, the way they fit in. And applied a little bit of glue on the sides. They, they fit in very positively. One thing I'll say about this kit. The fit has been very, very good all around. Like I say, it's a little dab of the uh, Bob Smith's glue. Because it's so thin, the complete reaction really works well. Hit it with the kicker. And then the dashboard literally slots in place. The fit is very, very good on this kit. Um, quite surprising. Just like almost Tamiya Engineering. Very, very good. So didn't really need any glue on this front piece. I think I did put a little piece in uh, here and there, but nothing uh, too drastic anywhere. Like I say, the fit is exceptional. Very, very precise. Probably one of the best Fujimi kits I've had so far. Uh, I've not built that many, but I've built a good half dozen to a dozen of them. Um, they've all been pretty good. The decals let them down. The decals are atrocious. Um, but the fit of this kit... Really can't fault it. There we go. So we have got the glue. Look, I've picked it up. So we must glue something in place. There we go. We've got a fire extinguisher, which we have painted red off camera and then detail painted the um, mounting strap and the actual handle itself. We have masked them off and airbrushed those. So a little dab of Loctite thicker CA glue in place down the bottom. There we go. And then the gear shifter. So nice turned aluminium gear shifter. Really nice little touch this. So I put a little bit of a bend in it. Took a little bit of the bend out because it was a little bit too severe. And I was going to dab that in the CA glue. Oh, ping it off rather. And then pop it in its hole. And then our uh, assume this is a handbrake. I'm assuming it is. Goes just down to the right hand side of the driver's seat. And again, we'll glue that from underneath. It's easier, less less mess and trouble free. And we've got these nice self adhesive Ferrari logos that Adam Smith sent me all the way from Canada. Um, so I did try and do it with the steering wheel in place, and it was just proving way too troublesome to get it lined up. So I just popped the steering wheel back off to make life a bit easier. And then glued it in place afterwards. These are really nice 3D self adhesive Ferrari logos. Really, really nice. And we're going to use these on the body at the end. But taking the steering wheel off to get it all positioned was definitely the way to do this. It worked a lot easier and a lot better. And there we go. We've all lined up. We just glue that back in place now. Nice and simple. A lot quicker than faffing with it on the, uh, the car itself. And then I'm going to give anything and everything I can in there a bit of a wash all around the gear shifter, all around the H pattern plates, uh, all around the uh, harnesses, the lot. I'm just going to leave that. Uh, suspension, basically need to take this off to get it to fit. So I'm going to glue in place the um, interior tub. 
like so, just normal CA glue and place holding that. And then we can line up all our suspension parts. A little dab of CA glue where they're needed. Not a bad fit these, quite positive fit. Everything fits, lines up perfectly. Really does. So into the top, and it's attached to the front. Job done, repeat that for the other side. And the front ones are already in place. So we've got a little bit of, uh, it's like a brace to go across. Sorry about my head in place. Look at that, look at all the gray hairs. <sighs> Great, that's all the live shows, that. It's Brian Windmill. Dealing with Brian Windmill is maybe gray. <laughs> Love you really, Brian. Um, so a couple of dabs of the Bob Smith's glue. Line all this up. It connects either side of the uh, where my hair is right there. See there? Well, I need a haircut as well, don't I? I don't know. So it goes either side of the interior wheel wells and then connects at the back and the side as well. Nice and easy. And there's a little pipe at the back that goes from the back of the dashboard to the engine as well. So just some careful positioning if we can get that lined up. Look at the wheels stuck on and off because of the poly caps. So we can remove them if they're needed. And there's a micro brush with a little touch of kicker on there just to get them all set in place. So again, not a bad engine bay. Uh, not too bad at all. Quite interesting. Not most interesting of engines, but there's a nice contrast of colours. We've got the texture on the cam covers. We've got the uh, wiring in there and what have you. Now, the headlights are supposed to have a chrome trim on them. Um, it came with a photo etch P trim to go around them with some rivets and what have you. No matter what I tried, if I was going to put them on, I would have ruined these clear parts. They were a nightmare. They didn't quite fit. They were a little bit too big. Um, I rolled them on a sander to get them to conform to shape. Tried sticking one in place, and I could just tell it was going to make an unholy mess. So I opted out of doing that. I spent about two hours here faffing around with these. I tried the photo etch. I tried using bare metal foil. And in the end, opted to masking them with thin tape. Now, somebody did mention not using Molotov pen. Uh, there's no way these could be done that neat. Not where they'd look acceptable to me uh, with freehand with the pen. And in my experience, the Molotov pens never truly dry. So as soon as I picked this up and handled it, I would have smudged the chrome, lost the shine. So I opted to mask with some Tamiya 1mm tape and infill it with the Tamiya 6mm tape and spray it, which I did with Miss Tobby Super Metallic Super Chrome. And here we are, this is after being sprayed, they've dried overnight, and we can quickly unmask them. So yeah, I mean, whatever way you choose to do it, but for me, using the chrome pen on this, on this very thin outline to keep it neat, it wouldn't look right. It's a very prominent part on the model this, and if it wasn't uniform, straight and neat, it would have looked odd. Um, so yeah, masking is the way to go for that clear demarcation. Now we've got numerous little lights to do, there's some on the front, some on the back, so we've got some glue and glaze, uh, PVA based glue, and we're just going to glue the clear parts onto the chrome parts. Um, now these have been cut off the sprue, and we have lost some of the chrome around the back of the part, but because um, they are inset into the body, it doesn't really matter, you're not going to see it at all. The kick chrome is really good, same on the headlight uh, backs as well, we'll just put a bit of glue and glaze on. Pop the headlight lens in. And again, these are inserted in the back of the uh, headlight itself. So no problems with any areas where chrome has been removed from cutting it from the sprue. As I say, it annoys me when manufacturers do this. You need to up your game, people. Um, put your sprue points at the back of the parts. So that when you trim the chrome off, you don't lose the chrome. Because a lot of today's chrome is well worth using. Now, the paintwork. You remember when we did the clear? I wasn't kind of concentrating. And I put a little bit too much down. Which kind of pays off here because I can go a little bit heavy with the sanding. I've got a 3000 grit Tamiya sanding sponge. We can hit it a bit harder now. Ooh, and really go to town and give it a really good sand. I've sped this up because it's a long drawn out process. But basically we're going to go around. I'm going to flat all this body right back to a flat even finish. That way we'll lose any um, imperfections in the paint. And also we'll lose a little bit of the thickness that 2K can give. Now, as always, there's areas where I'm not going to quite push it. Uh, I'm not going to push my look and absolutely destroy the clear coat. As I always say, I'd rather accept a blemish in the paint than destroy the clear coat. And we end up with three on this. I think there's one on the boot lid, the trunk lid. Um, there's one on the roof and there's one just on uh, one of the wings or fenders, if you call them, on the front. And I'm happy to accept that. 
If you push it too far, you're going to burn through the clear, and to me, that's going to ruin the entire model. So I'd rather have a slight dust blemish in the paintwork that you can only see at a particular angle than a loss of clear coat that you can see everywhere. So it's up to you how far you want to go. It's up to you how much of a perfectionist you are. For me, this will do. Once we've flattened the entire thing, as you can see, we've dulled down the surface. Um, we're coming with our Ultima polish system. So we're going to start off with our compound, which is a more aggressive polish, basically. So more abrasive. And we're going to go around the entire model and polish it up. So like I say, using the compound, circular motions. We've got brand new cloths that we should have at UMP anytime soon. These are nice, clean cotton cloths. And they're working absolutely fantastic. Sped this up as well. I'm just going to go around and in circular motions, very, very carefully uh, polish it all back up to a high shine. So we use the more aggressive compound to begin with and then come back in with the less aggressive polish at the end. Now, as with the sanding, uh, the polish is exactly the same. Be careful of any raised areas. Take your time. Be careful because anything raised, uh, any kind of rivets, handles, seams, edges of spoilers, wheel arches, etc. The paint's always thinner on the edge and it's really easy to burn through the paint. And like I say, this is where you get into the stage now of where is acceptable. Do I accept that little bit of micro scratching to say burn through the clear coat or do I push it and carry on? So and you can decide that. Once you're happy that you've got the compound done, I'm just checking the roof, hit it with a clean piece of cloth as well and have a look at the kind of finish you've got. It's not going to be perfect off the compound, that's where the polish comes in because the polish is a finer grade um, abrasive. So it's going to give you a much nicer finish. But it's like going down through stages of sandpaper. Uh, you get less and less scratches the finer you go. So clean cloths, very important. You can see that slight blemish on the roof. I'm not really all that bothered. It's there. I went back and did go over it again. But it was just getting to the point of I'm going to get close to burning through. And it's just not worth the risk. And then we can move on to the sides and everywhere. And like I said, just be careful when you raised areas, recessed. Um, you don't burn through the paint. You are going to accumulate some um, excess polish and compound in areas. So at the end of each coat, when you're wiping it off, you might have to get a toothbrush in there and give it a clean. Once the compound's done, I go around the whole model with my airbrush with watering. I kind of jet washed all the panel lines to get any remnants of compound out uh, and then dried it off. And then we're hitting it with the polish now to give it its final shine. Now, the benefit of putting a little bit too much 2K down is I've got plenty to work with here. Um, and yeah, it pays off because the depth of shine on this thing is absolutely phenomenal. It really, really is. Uh, I would have preferred to put the 2K down a bit thinner, like I have been over the past few models. But hey, sometimes things happen. And uh, well, we were lucky. We were very lucky. We've got one, a couple of little runs that we've got rid of. So we were lucky there. Uh, and like I say, once we've gone around and polished it all, we can give it a good buff over with a nice fresh piece of cloth. Until we've got a nice shine. So turn it well this. The depth of the red, very, very deep. The pink primer, the Rosso Red Corsa from Gravity Spain. And obviously their 2K clear combined with our uh, polish system. Absolutely wonderful. Um, worked out really well. Absolutely beautiful red colour. Deep, deep red paint really really vibrant red color as well and there we go one final one over and again i'll hit this with the uh, airbrush with water in uh, like i say you can use that as a jet wash to kind of get in between all panel lines get any remnants of polish out uh and make sure it's all nice and clean and then just dry it off and give it a final polish but yeah lovely paint job very happy with this one absolutely beautiful color on a beautiful car of course we'll do the bonnet hood separately as well and care is needed on that because there's a lot of edges on that to be very wary of. But you see all the, the battle scarred remnants of sanders and uh, clots on the bench. So we've got some P to put on the body now as well. Instructions aren't very clear. The instructions kind of show this going on top. It wouldn't fit for me, so I put it underneath instead. So a little bit of Bob Smith uh, odorless glue underneath and then pop the P in place. Hold it for a second or two. We need to paint under here as well. We'll do like the sound deadening in black um, a little bit later. Assume it's sound deadening insulation, must be. Don't know. Maybe it isn't. Maybe it's body colour. I don't know. But I'm going to paint it black when we do the interior later. So yeah, carefully line this up. Uh, like I say, the instructions do show it going on from the top. I did try, but then the clear intakes wouldn't fit on the top. So 
opted to pop it here. And then, uh, yeah, it fitted in. A little bit tricky to do. As you see, we get to get stuck to the tweezers. So it's a bit of a, a fight to get it down, stick it in place. The bobsmith doesn't grab it instantly. So you need to uh, just take your time. Now, at this stage, this for me, me and myself and Luke Cars, well, Blackrock and Model Works are talking about this stage in the build. This is the end stage where you're putting everything on. This is where you wreck everything. So you need to be careful of glues. Don't get any glues on your fingers. Don't spill any. So use the safest glue you possibly can. There's two for me that are safer. This UV glue is great. It will wipe off if you have any issues. So I tend to use this where I can. Uh, so it's a UV activated kind of resin glue. Um, it's brilliant on parts like this where they're not going to be seen because you can pop it in, hit it with a UV pen and it dries pretty clear and nice and strong but you can always get parts off so that's good you can go back and fix mistakes and the next one is anything PVA if you let it go tacky it gets a lot more um, grab to it and it will grab parts a lot better and I'm using these on these real lights now CA glue, while it grabs things instantly it can ruin exterior parts so try and avoid take at all costs unless you really have to because trust me it will ruin things in a heartbeat now things like these headlights there's numerous ways you could put these on you could use the uv glue in my experience that'll make a holy mess uh pva glue would be my next choice because you can get it off you can remove the excess but for me the best single-handed choice for this is to use a clear varnish so get the part exactly in place where it should be literally where it's going to sit hold it make sure it stays in place by itself and then take your finger off and then get a nice thin brush i'm going to use uh, alkaline aqua gloss for this this is a clear water-based varnish and we're going to use the brush and the capillary action just kind of like we would use with tammy extra thin and we're going to let the varnish flow around all the edges and let the capillary action carry it around and this will dry and trust me, this will well and truly glue this in place. I've used this trick for years. Um, it's a very, very safe way of gluing parts in place. So just touch it. You can brush it over should you wish as well. Um, as soon as the capillary reaction, uh, as soon as the brush hits the panel line that's left between the light lens and the car body, the capillary reaction will pull the um, clear paint away. And trust me, leave that for 20 minutes. That's as good as any glue. And you can get it off should you need. So that's my way of doing parts like that. Then obviously we can repeat that for the other side. And then just put that body to one side and don't touch it for a good half an hour or so. So like I say, trying to avoid Seagull at all costs is the devil of all things to ruin your model. Uh, we've got some grills there we're going to paint up as well. This is one for behind the front grill. And there's two for behind the rear wheel arches as well. So we just sprayed the PE in Mr. Surface of 1500 Black. And then we've got the front grill off again. It's chrome, kick chrome, because it's inserted inside. We can leave it. It's fine. Um, and then we're going to hit the back of it with some UV glue again. Uh, the UV glue is a game changer. It's dirt cheap on eBay. Really, really cheap stuff to buy. Uh, it really is a game changer in saving, destroying things. Um, so the grill goes in the back. Now, I did find it needed a little bit of uh, persuasion to be pushed forward and it did fall through a couple of times it's a little bit tricky to get in place so pop it in make sure it's level lined up equally each side and you will find it needs pushing down a little bit and as you can see it does like to keep falling out so just persevere to get it in and then what i did with it in i used my tweezers with one hand to push it down while i hit it with the uv glue to glue it in place and it sat really well now there's a very nice photo etch ferrari logo we were talking about earlier that sits in here um, that looked great. The pinged off into oblivion and I couldn't find it. Uh, I searched high and low. We had the hoover out with a tight well, sock on looking for it. I went all over my bench. It gone forever. Luckily, I found a suitable replacement and Simon's sending me a spare to replace that in my detail upset. So thank you, Simon, for that. Quickly, I've painted inside the uh, cabin uh, roof liner and a pillars and B pillars in Vlo model color black. I'm just wiping off any excess off the bare metal foil, and we'll do the same under the bonnet as well, um, just to kind of put the headlining in as such. I say bare metal foil, it's a Hasegawa mirror foil, isn't it? That's what it is, that's what we used on this. Much, much nicer stuff, made a much nicer job. Of course, we have polished this body up, we haven't given it a wax yet, so we'll give it a good shine up at the end. 
clear parts clear parts on this are stunning absolutely beautiful and they click in so positively they didn't even really need glue there's four locating points on the roof and i thought oh that's not very good i was pushing it in here thinking no oh, it's not clicked in very well and i realized i hadn't pushed it in fully and once it did it held it in absolutely fantastic but to be safe we'll put a bit of uv glue at the back hit that with a pen it says a five second cure on this stuff i would say it's more at least 10 so i'd leave it a little bit longer and then apply a little bit of the front now the trick of this stuff is put the glue in it wicks in to the parts quite quick so let it wick in for a little bit so it gets some purchase and then hit it with the pen don't let it go in too much the rear window again really positive fit so just make sure it's lined up i've put it in here it needs to go back a little bit there's a little bit of a gap at the back so push it back fully and again in strategic places we won't be seen hit it with a bit of the uv glue hit it with the pen light and we're all good to go simple quick easy less fuss less risk of damage than ca glue and these say these pens cost less than four pound each they're dirt cheap another part of the p that we painted earlier these just sit in these little vents at the back here so some careful manipulation and then again hit it with the uv pen at this stage in the build if you pick the model up wipe your fingers before you do because trust me there'll come a point where you're doing this and as you go to let it go you're stuck to it You've got sear glue on your finger and you're stuck yourself to the model and ruin part of your clear coat. So just be paranoid and keep wiping your fingers. Trust me, been there, done it, got the fingerprints on the body. That's why I like the PVA base glues and the UV. They all wipe off, even the UV glue wipes off. Um, at worst case, a little bit of UMP airbrush cleaner and it takes it right off, no problem at all. It's just a much safer, more reliable way of gluing things in place interior mirror we left it chrome little bit of uv glue in the top pop it in because it's clear part the uv glue shines through i mean hit it like that and there we go now we make the body up now we've had this on before there's two little like lips at the front that fold over well not fold but slip over the front you'll see where they fit if you put the body on it's quite noticeable there they are by my fingers so just push them forward Make sure they sit in. The back is really, really tight. There's something about some Fujimi bodies. They're just unbelievably tight getting them on the uh, the chassis. But they do fit well. So this one, you see how tight that is over the back. We've got to push that over. <laughs> Quite worrying really when you're at this stage thinking, oh my God, is everything going to fall off? So just ease it in. There we go. And then what I found was grab the flat decal tweezers grab that bar and then just manipulate the two pins into the locating holes at the back and boom, there we go, we're in place. Fuel for the cap, again, the kick chrome. I cut it off thinking you're gonna be able to see this where the chrome's missing and you actually can't, luckily. So a little bit of PVA based glue and then this really fiddly little Ferrari logo, which doesn't sit on the grill, it kinda just sits up inside the intake there. So it's like a 3D effect and that's why I was so gutted to lose that part. It's a very prominent part of this car. Thankfully, I had a spare, and thank you to Simon for sending me one of his spares as well. On the boot, we've got a nice PE Ferrari logo. Again, how would you glue this? You could CA glue it. Because it's such a small part, you're going to get CA glue squeezing out from the sides, and it's going to look awful. So again, we grab the Aqua Gloss, a little tiny bit of it, just touch it over the PE. The capillary reaction carries it all around and under it. It did move at a touch, but we can grab our tweezers and straighten it up. And again, leave it alone and it will dry really well. Now, we've got some door handles. So the door handles are made of PE, which we cut off. I was bending them so they're bent outwards a little bit. And then there's a nice turn metal piece to go through the middle. That just slots in. It looks like a switch and it's not. It's the button for the door. It just pops through the middle. So I put a little bit of PVA through the PE. Pop the piece in, bit of PVA on the body, a little bit too much there, but it covers it quite well. And then just push it home. Like so. Refer to pictures of the car. These do sit fairly straight from what I can see. And again, leave it. Now, with using PVA on all this stuff, or Aqua Gloss or whatever you've used, you're going to have to be careful when you polish it up at the end. You're going to have to be very careful going past these parts uh, because it will rip them off. So just take your time. There's three of these. 
two doors, one on the boot. So just line them up, bit of PVA. I wouldn't use CA glue. Trust me, do not use CA glue. It'll ruin all your hard work. And just get them all lined up and then leave them. It's a good time to have a drink, to have a chat, wherever, with friends. You know, we've been a hangout like I am or for live. Um, yeah, just take your time. Really take your time at this stage. Now we've got some of the belts. What are they called? Straps is what they are for the bonnet. So I'm just trimming them up with the photo etch uh, shears. I'm going to glue them in place. Uh, the piece where it attaches just over my tweezers are now is left in metal color. And the rest of it will paint black. You could mask it and paint it. I opted to brush paint it in low model color black. And once this is dry, we'll do that a little bit later on. There are two very, very fiddly little hmm, hinge clamps, brackets. I don't know what you call them. They go on there. I got them in place, glued in place, and then lost one of them. So I had to take them off and use the kit parts, which are substantially bigger. It's a real shame, but you've got to do what you've got to do. That's on the front on the bonnet. Rear, we've got the head, uh, number plate lights are here again, kick chrome. Just cut them off and pop them in place with some PVA glue. A little bit out of focus, do apologize. There we go. They're looking good. And then this rear number plate P piece that came with the kit. So painted this in Mr. Service of 1500 black. Left it to dry for a couple of hours and then came in with a 400. UMP thinny stick. You see there, it's all painted, all black. And then if we sand it lightly on here, keeping it flat. So I moved over to a customizable because it's flatter and it keeps its shape. And give it a nice gentle sand. You'll see it takes all the paint off the raised areas. Look at that. We're left with a beautiful number plate. How pretty is that? How easy and quick and simple was that? And then with a little bit of PVA glue on a micro brush, you can carefully pop it in place. Make sure it's straight. We've got the exhaust on here as well. Didn't cover the exhaust, completely missed it. Turn P, uh, sorry, turned down the minimum exhaust from Hobby Design. They did have a really nice little trim around the outside of them, which I did battle and get all four of them on and then lost one. The PE on this kit drove me mad. And speaking of driving me mad, here's the window wipers just for Philip. So we cut them off the fret. We need to bend both edges of the rear part. This is good as a tutorial of getting off my own photo etch wipers. Um, so the two outer kind of wings need to be folded in to make the three-dimensional shape of the wiper. So we get it carefully on our PE bender using the pre-marked lines. So line it up. Need a very precise hand here. These photo edge wipers are no longer the bane of my life. They're a bit fiddly, but I don't mind making them now. I've made a few sets of these lately, and they've turned out all right. They're a bit of a pig to get in place on the model, but making them fairly easy as well. So bend both edges, and then we pop on this little bit of trim at the top here. And that's the piece that holds the actual wiper blade. And then dip the blade in the glue on both locating points either side. Again, this is the Bob Smiths, and then we just locate it at the correct angle and just keep pushing it around to the CA glue grabs it. Like I say, the Bob Smiths CA glue doesn't grab as well as a lot of other glues. It's not an instant grab, unless it's your skin. It sticks to your skin in a heartbeat. Uh, but other parts, you're going to have to just move it around a little bit till it grabs. And then what I find is once it's grabbed, it's got a hold of it, hit it with some kicker. On these photo edge parts, we've got no problem spraying kicker onto it. But just keep moving it around, keep offering it up until it grabs. So it will eventually grab hold. It's a bit tedious, but be patient, be calm. There you go, we got it. And then I'll just take that off camera and give it a quick st. And then you heard that st with kicker and job done. Now I've got a bit of PVA glue in the holes where the window wipers sit. And again, let it go tacky, let it grab a hold. I found don't position them just yet. Let the glue get a hold, give it 10, 15 minutes, and then move the window wiper where you would like it to sit. Uh, otherwise, you're constantly battling, fighting where to go. Now, Adam Smith very kindly sent me these badges. Um, I did put the decals on uh, as my head again. Look at this. Ooh, ooh, gray hair. I need a haircut, don't I? Look at that. Ooh, terrible. 
Um, I'd already put the decals on, but I thought the badges over the top are going to look infinitely better. Um, they are self-adhesive. This one didn't quite go in the right place first time round. So we're going to very gently and carefully get a knife just behind it to grab it. And lift it up and then move it over. Um, no harm in doing this as long as the badge is kind of the same size, which they just about are. Um, it gives a nice 3D effect because obviously the badges are raised unless they're painted on or stickers. But for me, I opted to use these. So thank you, Adam, for sending these. They are really, really nice badges. Never seen these before. So nice to have in the uh, arsenal of weaponry. There we go, there's the front one done, lined up, and then just push it down, make sure it's fully burnished down, and if you've got any adhesive around the edge where you've been moving it around, you can wipe it off with, I don't know, a clean cotton bud, clean bit of tissue, and just take your time, and there you go, get a clean cloth, and just wipe off any of the residue off the uh, adhesiveness. Like I say, we haven't given this a final wax yet, it'll come alive at the end once we do. Uh, but on the side, we've got the shield kind of badges for the side as well. Slightly different ones in this kit. I think they're a more modern one, but I quite like the look of them, to be honest. They had a bit of green on the top of the logo as well. I thought they looked quite good, to be honest. So again, line them up as much as you can. Knock the bonnet off for the four billionth time. Line it all up. And there you go. Once you're happy... Push it down. If you're not, you can re-manipulate it, remove it, put it back on. Self-adhesive, they are very, very sticky. Just keep moving it till it lines up and then push it down and wipe off any excess adhesive. And the same for the side. And these add a nice three-dimensional effect to the model. They look really, really good. Right, so there's our engine. We're not going to see this in the pictures because it's a pig to do. Engine's looking good. We've got a bit of wiring in there. Um, some of the detail apart. And we've got some more Ultimate Shine Spray. I like to use this over the wax. The wax gets in everywhere. I like to use the shine spray. Like I say, we need to be very, very careful of all that PE or any areas of interest. I've added the wipers because I grabbed a wiper and ripped it off with the cloth and the Ferrari logo on the boot and had to stick them back on. So with this stuff, you just wipe it on, wipe it over. It dries to a haze. Clean it off with a clean piece of cloth and buff it up until you get a nice high shine and wow what a shine we got at the end this thing is really pretty a few flaws in the paintwork it's just one of those things i'm not going to get them all perfect like i say there's three blemishes in the paintwork it just is what it is i quite happily accept a bit of a blemish rather than ruining my hard work so i'm just using a cotton but here's a little bit of pa pva based glue that i haven't quite got rid of and then put the glove on give it a final wipe over everywhere, do the windows and everywhere to get our final high shine and yeah looking good um i love our polish system from ump um another product i'm proud of kind of not developing but sorting and uh testing what have you and uh, it works really well um the paints come out absolutely beautiful on this I'm really really happy with the color the depth of shine is phenomenal and just what a beautiful looking car it really is a stunning car i mean it should be one of the world's most expensive car 50 odd million dollars whatever it went for crazy money for a car but what a pretty pretty little car really is nice um what a great model the fujimi kit's been good the fit has been some of the best i've had in a kit ever really very very precise fitting a lot of it didn't need glue to fit in place which is always testament to how good a kit is and there we go there is the finished model so this is Fujimi's 24 scale Ferrari 250 GTO. We've got hobby design detail upset in there. The hobby design wire wheels and the hobby design exhaust. The wheels are a must have for this. They are infinitely better than the kit wheels. They're tricky to put together, but wow, they look amazing. The exhaust, somebody did say they didn't look accurate. They had a little flute in the side, but yeah, I like these. They look good. They're missing a little bit of trim, but hey ho, it is what it is um the pe i didn't use all the pe i bet i used half uh because just thought some of it wasn't warranted um the rest of it i put it were and as i required what a great kit went together great it's turned out absolutely beautiful the hasagawa burr metal foil the mirror finish foil is a lot better than burr metal foil it's a little bit different to use yes you can still see some crinkles it's difficult to get the crinkles out because the crinkles not on the foil it's in the body of the car. So you'd have to go around and make sure everything is perfectly smooth. 
Um, but yeah, this thing's just stunning. Absolutely beautiful looking car. Uh, I built two absolutely beautiful cars this year. The single Porsche and this are just absolutely lovely cars to look at. And like I said, this Fujimi kit, if you're thinking about getting one, do it. If you can find them, get one. I've recently re-released it. Um, but try and get the wheels. At the very least, get the wheels. The wheels are a must-have. They add so much interest to the kit. You may need to fettle the wheels a little bit. I had to do a little bit of trimming here and there to get them to sit properly. Um, but what a beautiful car and a great model as well. So hope you enjoyed looking at this build as much as me. And uh, I'm going to send this back to me for some final thoughts. Well, there we go. What can I say about that? Very happy with that one. Very, very happy how that turned out. One of my favourite builds. Um, kind of probably ever, to be honest. It's, it's just been a great build all around. The photo has tested me. Uh, I've lost more than I put on, I think. <laughs> no, I haven't. But I've lost some parts, and they just ping off into oblivion. Uh, we lost a little bonnet catches. We lost a Ferrari badge. One of the exhaust um, surrounds I lost. Got them all in place, and then looked back, and one had gone. Uh, I had to take them all off because I couldn't find it anywhere. Absolute nightmare. Um, but that's a trials and tribulations of photo etch. Just remember, just because it's there doesn't mean you have to use it. Sometimes it's not worth using parts if they're not adding much detail to the existing plastic parts. So don't be bullied into thinking you have to use it all. It's your model, it's your choice. Put the spare bits in your spare box. You'll never know when you use them later down the line, as I did with the Ferrari logo. So. It just shows you. And a big thanks to Sai for sending me the spare one out he had. Um, yeah, it just shows you not everything warrants doing. Now, what I will say if you build this kit is get the wire wheels. The wire wheels add so much to look at this car. The kit ones aren't too bad. I've seen a lot worse. The photo etch turned aluminium ones, it's a whole different level. Looks so much better. A little bit fiddly to make. I quite enjoyed making them, even though I put one of them on back to front. But thanks to Alan, who pointed this out to me. I fixed the problem, and I think they look great. Really, really good. Uh, they're a little bit fiddly to get on the model. I had to trim them a little bit on the resin hub on the back to get them to sit right. But they really did look well, and really did look good at the end of the day. So I would definitely add those. And the exhausts, somebody did comment that they don't have the little side flutes with the holes in the side. And they're right, they don't, but they look so much nicer. Than the plastic one, so I opted to put them on anyway. Uh, and the Rosso Red Course, a 2K from Gravity. What can I say? The depth and clarity of the 2K, the depth and colour of the paint, absolutely wonderful. Uh, like I said, I think this is one of my favourite builds ever. I think this one has been. It's been very enjoyable. The fit of the kit is unbelievable. It's so precise. Um, it, like Fujimi, pat on the back. Well done for that one. Very high quality kit. Uh, the clear parts, absolutely beautiful on it as well. And just all round, a really enjoyable build. So let's get this one done. It's nice to see it done. And uh, it just looks stunning. It's a pretty, pretty car, the 250 GTO. And it looks nice in my display case. You can't quite see my display case, can you? I've moved my camera. Yeah, there's look, she's right there. I think that's it. It is. It is. That's the Ferrari. <laughs> so, yeah. Lovely build, and I hope you've enjoyed watching this as much as I've built it. Like I say, if you want to get two-week early access on the videos, I'm going to have to pimp this for a little bit, so bear with me, all right? If you want two-week early access on the videos, you can become a patron down below. There's no paywall, but it, just means, it means you get to watch the videos sooner. They get released two weeks earlier for patrons, uh, and if you're not, just wait two weeks, and it'll appear on the normal ISM channel as normal anyway. Um... Links down below, as well as other ways you can support the channel through PayPal me or buy me a coffee as well. And the patrons got other perks to it as well, including a clothing discount or merch discount, which will come next time we do a round of merchandise. We've just done t-shirts. You'll see my new t-shirt soon. Uh, and Paul ISM mugs are coming soon as well. So if you're interested in any merch, there's a link down to my merch page on Facebook. Nothing on it yet, but there will be very soon. As soon as you get pictures of the t-shirts, they'll go on there. And as soon as I've got details on the mugs, they'll go on there as well. If you want to own a little bit of my merch, you can. If you don't, well, you don't. It's as simple as that. Loads of other links in there as well, all through uh, anything to do with ISM and UMP and myself. They're all down below, uh, including lists of all the products used in my videos. My Amazon affiliate store, which still isn't working, uh, and an email address to get directly in touch with me, should you wish to have a chat about anything. So there we are. That's it. What's next? I've got a very exciting review on the way. 
Very exciting when it comes. Terrifying at the same time. You'll see that one. So if you want two week early, two week early access on that, that's well worth paying for. It's going to be immense. But I think we're going to go back to the Lamborghini. I think the Lamborghini is the plan. Uh, the hobby design one. Um, and yeah, the bike's still there. We'll work on the bike as and when. We're in no rush to do that one. Luke's just finished his. And it looks absolutely beautiful. Uh, but I think we'll go back to the hobby design Lamborghini. Fancy doing some reviews as well. So hopefully you see some reviews over the next coming weeks. And uh, there we are. There's build number. I think it's number seven of the year done with the Ferrari. There we are. Question for today then before we go. What has been your most enjoyable build? Hmm. Ever, should we say? Let, let me think of the word. I think we've asked this question before, haven't we? So let's let's think of a different one. What kit has surprised you the most? What kit did you go in thinking wasn't going to be very good? You know, like I've gone into this, it's a Fujimi kit. Oh, it's not a Tamiya. Is it going to be any good? And I've come out saying it's probably one of the best kits I've built. What kit has surprised you the most that you've built? You've gone into it thinking, oh, it's not going to be very good. But you've actually come out of it thinking that was a really good kit. Either for its price, the manufacturer, the subject. What was your most favourite kit you've built and what was it? There we go. There's the question for today. So there we are. Make sure you sub to the channel. Click that bell notification to get notified of all the latest videos. Click the thumbs up as well and leave a comment. Love all the comments off everybody. Uh, it's nice to see the feedback off everything. And uh, yeah, I will catch you all for the next video. Enjoy the rest of the day, everyone. I am going live in about 15 minutes on my Paul SM live on the bench page. Links down below. Um, Cover and join us there as well. Live every morning and Wednesday and Friday evenings. And if you're a patron, you get a Wednesday morning and a Friday morning exclusive live stream as well. Take care, everyone. Enjoy the rest of the day. Bye bye.